Thank you. I was asked to uh, raise some remarks on three topics. Uh, first of all, you might be interested in the outcome of the German elections at the end of September and uh, the potential impact for Europe. The second point is, well, my viewpoint on the current situation in Europe. And the last point is, with all necessary restraint for a foreigner, foreigner what are my views on Greece and uh, are there any hints for Greece to climb further up the ladder? To start with the first point, I think it is very likely that uh, the Christian Democratic Party in Germany will enter the Chancellery, Ferro, the, 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 uh, Ferro, uh, Chancellery again in September, um, namely Mr. Laschet. He is running as the candidate for the Christian Democrats and his sister party in Bavaria. Uh, as far as I see it, I think uh, a broad segment of the voters is very much in favor of continuance and reliability. Uh, perhaps they know that Germany has to undertake stronger achievements to reform um, some uh, and, and, and to, 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 to undertake reform steps, but nevertheless, they don't want to be disturbed. And um, this continuance and this reliability is mostly associated with the Christian Democrats. The only open question is uh, what kind of uh, coalition is at the end of the road or at the end of the day uh, uh, negotiated. There are three possibilities, a so-called black-green coalition. Uh, an alternative could be a black-green-yellow uh, coalition whenever the Greens, the Green Party and the Christian Democratic Party wouldn't have the majority in the parliament. And a last opportunity is a black, red, yellow coalition, uh, which would include the Social Democratic Party. But I think a very strong wing of the SPD is not very much in favor to enter uh, a coalition again headed by the Christian Democrats. Uh, on the domestic level, I think uh, the next government is compelled to a far extent to undertake some uh, reforms, as I already mentioned. Um, despite uh, the attitude of the electorate, I think they have to invest more in education, in infrastructure, in digitalization. They have to serve for a better health and care system. And not at least, I think a big topic in Germany is to serve for a demography firm uh, pension system. On the international and respectively the European stage, I think Germany will remain a very reliable partner for its neighbors and friends in Europe. Uh, I think it, is, uh, it will be headed by a Christian Democratic Chancellor, will be very much interested in holding close ties with uh, the UK after the Brexit and uh, uh, a restored transatlantic relation after the intermezzo with uh, former President uh, 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 um, I have forgotten the name of this president. Are you joking with us? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but having said that more precise, I think Germany will still be helpful uh, in maintaining the cohesion of Europe um, to be supportive in terms of a fair compensation and financial adjustment between those member states who are still facing structural uh, problems and uh, some other member states who are in a better home position. Um, but uh, having said that, I think there should be no doubt. Uh, I expect that a new German government is definitely not in favor of uh, uh, a so-called transition union. Uh, of uh, joint liabilities, uh, of a weakening of the criteria of the Stability and Growth Pact. Perhaps they might be supportive in a sort of a reform of the Stability Growth Pact in terms of efficiency, uh, transparency, uh, uh, and simplification. But I think, bluntly spoken, nobody should expect that this government, headed by the Christian Democrats, would be very supportive in an, an amendment of the um, uh, Stability Growth Pact or a continuation of the uh, uh, Recovery and Resilience uh, Fund, which has been established combating the pandemic crisis. 
Having said that, I referred in, in many views already on Europe. Um, I think the good news are, in my eyes, that Europe has been willing and capable to combat the pandemic uh, aftermath by implementing this uh, recovery and resilience fund. That is good news. But um, whenever you ask me, I think um, there are more bad news. In my eyes, Europe is definitely not in a very good shape. Uh, some keywords have been already mentioned by Monsieur de Villepin and Martin Schulz. Uh, I think against the background of a dramatically changing global pattern of economic, technological, political, even military influence and, and, uh, and uh, power, I think Europe has been not willing or able up to now to establish a comprehensive and coherent foreign and security strategy. The second point is I'm definitely worried about the uh, renaissance of autocratic and nationalistic tendencies in, in, in Europe um, that might cause further fragmentation between East and West and hopefully not between South and uh, North, but uh, I see with very scared eyes the violation of common European values implemented constitutively in our treaties. A third point is, yes, a digital sovereignty is already put on the table, but I see not the related measures and achievements uh, to come along and to have an own answer against the dominance of Chinese and American uh, internet giants. And last point, under this topic, I see an ultra expansionary uh, monetary policy of the ECB. This policy, this um, uh, monetary policy contributed undoubtedly to combat the euro crisis and the pandemic crisis, but whenever you ask me, it is causing midterm risks of uh, in a severe amount uh, uh, looking at the future. Coming to the last point, well, with all the necessary restraint uh, I already mentioned, um, well, I think the reform agenda the Greece uh, government implemented uh, leads the side right uh, and uh, should be pursued without substantial lowering, and my full respect is that they succeeded to a wide extent. Um, and whenever I should sum up six points, um, I have some perhaps hints or recommendations that are not only true and important uh, specifically for Greece, but perhaps especially for Greece. Firstly, a good governance including a, rule, a, reliable, a reliable rule of law. Uh, secondly, an effective service, efficient service-minded uh, service administration including an efficient tax administration. Third, the elimination of non-productive tax grants and subsidies. Fourth, investments in infrastructure and education because their quality, respectively, their qualification is crucial for further growth in the future. Fifthly, a support of startups because they are very important to hold young people in country. And six, further empowerment of comparative advantages Greece has, for example, tourism, shipping and logistics, port industry, renewable industries, and possibly a sort of an energy hub, including pipelines and LNG stations and the exploitation or production of hydro, hydrocarbon. I think that are key, that are, could, could be keys um, to develop comparative um, advantages Greece has uh, in uh, view to, to other countries. So thanks a lot. I could not stay on the schedule uh, uh, exactly, but uh, hopefully I s spoke not lengthy.